what's up everybody? Doc Junji here, ang tropa mong residente. And this is the second part of the frequently asked clerkship questions that I posted a few weeks ago. So, we're starting off quickly from question number one coming from Dodong. Paano po humanap ng karat during clerkship? What? <laughs> Well, kung di mo pa alam kung paano, by this time na clerk ka na, huwag mo na ngayon simulan kasi palagi kang pagod pag clerk ka and, you know, mas mahirap, mas mahihirapan ka. Though, huwag na, huwag na. We're going to more serious questions now. Question number two. Paano maging stellar? This is a question from Smiley. Well, you have to stand out in a positive way. Uh, lagi ka dapat active sa mga hospital assignments mo, uh, mag-volunteer ka, or help sa mga procedures na gagawin sa pasyente mo. Or kahit actually kahit hindi mo pasyente, halimbawa, papasok dun yung resident, may gagawin sa procedure or yung consultant, sumama ka lang dun. May papabot sa'yo, may papahawak sa'yo, and you can observe na from there na ganito pala yung ginagawa, halimbawa, nagsisi-TP or uh, kung ano man, just be there, be present, kahit hindi mo pasyente, di ba? Just be there. Hindi ka naman pababayaan ng mga residente mo or consultants, lalo na if may ipagagawa sa'yo. Also, you should know your patients by heart, lalo na yung history and physical exam nila. Yun yung usual na itinatanong ng mga consultants and residents regarding sa mga patients. And tinatanong nila yun minsan sa mga clerks kapag ka nag-round sila. Now, another way is to ask questions. Hindi para maging stellar ka, dapat alam mo lahat. Asking questions gives us the hint na curious ka dun sa pasyente or willing kang may malaman na bago or matutunan na bago regarding dun sa patient. Willing kang matuto. Now for question number three, coming from Poop Girl. So, by that name, siguro alam niya na kung saan papunta yung question niya. Saan po pinakamagandang mag-poop sa UMC? Yung may bidet and peaceful environment po sana. Hehe. <laughs> Okay, so a uh, big issue to when it comes to clerkship kasi sanay tayo sa CR ng College of Med na very accessible, kompleto sa gamit, wala tayong kaagaw. Pero sa hospital kasi medyo mas pili yung CR na ginagamit natin kasi yung ibang CR doon uh, ginagamit ng patients. So, ano na, medyo hindi ganun kaalaga. Uh, let me break it down by building. So, start tayo doon sa first building. Kung hindi nyo pa alam kung saan yung first building, yun yung naandun sa may highway, sa may statue ni Lasal. So, sa first building, CR na pwede doon is yung sa tapat ng payroll department. Yung from the pharmacy, yung papunta doon sa A-King, meron doon CR sa bandang kanan. Yun, kompleto yon May bidet doon, tahime, kukonti yung gumagamit. So, maganda mag-CR doon. Also, kung sa first building, yung Miku clerks area, yung parang lounge nila doon yun, may CR yun uh, for clerks yun usually pero give nyo na yun sa mga micro rotators, may <laughs> sarili silang CR wag na kayong makiagaw doon no kasi doon masarap doon, aircon pero you know, kung hindi ka micro rotator, wag mo nang gamitin yun sa second building naman wala, wala akong may sasuggest na CR sa second building, you could go sa third building sa ninth floor CR doon yun yung go to na CR ko nung clerk ako nung intern ako and even now kahit resident ako yun tahimik sa ninth floor CR ko konti yung gumagamit uh, peaceful environment and malinis malinis yung CR doon pagka naman hindi sa ninth floor na CR siguro pwede yung gamitin would be sa basement CR near our ladies hall kapag ka umaga pa kasi kapag ka gabi pinapatay yung ilaw doon malapit yun sa morgue, medyo sketchy. Okay? Medyo nakakatakot doon. Uh, another CR naman sa MAC building, yung mga CR nila sa first floor. Though, nagsasara yung MAC building around 7 or 8 p.m. Pero, you could go there kung hindi kayo pipigilan ng guard. Makakapasok kayo doon. Or, around 4 or 5 in the morning, nag-open na yun. Pwede kayo mag-CR doon. Another building that I could think of is yung sa Aking. Sa Aking, ang Hello King building, Yung mga CR sa gilid ng elevator nila, yun. Maganda rin yung mga CR doon. Kompleto din doon. May bidet, may soap. Yun. Kompleto doon. Tahimik din. And malinis. Ang isang may papayo ko lang kung magsi-CR kayo, magpaalam kayo sa mga groupmates nyo, ganyan. Wala nang hiya-hiya. Sabihin nyo na kung saan kayo pupunta kung anong gagawin nyo. Kasi pagka hinanap kayo ng residente, tapos hindi alam ng groupmates nyo kung asan kayo, tapos bigla kayong nawawala, baka ma-out of post pa kayo. Okay? Now, for question number four, Bubbles asked a few questions here. Uh, first question would be, secret spots kapag ka 
kailangan or gustong umiyak. So, secret spots could be sa mga CR na na-mention ko. Yun, pwede kayong uh, umiyak doon. Quiet time. Pwede rin sa mga fire exit. Ito, notorious to, fire exit. Madaming naiyak sa fire exit. Lalo na dun sa far side na fire exit. Fire. Far side na fire exit ng third building. Yung opposite ng elevators. Yun. Madami, madaming umiiyak doon. But the best place to cry is anywhere na you have support. Yung you're with your friends, with your co-clerks, or co-interns, or kahit residents. Kung kanino kayo nakakahanap ng support, uh, be able to run to them, makapaglabas, makapaglabas ng frustrations and anger, galit nyo, inis nyo, ganyan. Also, I would suggest na you have an outlet during your clerkship for outlet for your stress. Uh, inuman man yan, gala, art, singing, whatever, kung ano man yan, have an outlet para hindi kayo mapupuno ng stress kasi kapag ka napuno kayo ng stress, delikado yon. Now, for uh, his or her second question, She asks, may mga hospital staff ba na nagpa-power trip na may personal? Gagawin kang utusan for personal staff or personal reasons? Well, by staff, if you mean residents, then the answer would be no. Like sometimes nakikisabay kami pag bumibili or nagpapadeliver ng food yung clerks. Pero never like uutusan namin, bili kami ng ganto or ganyan just because. Like, ganun. Yung trip lang, mautusan lang, ganun. I I've never heard of that. Hindi ko na-experience yon Sometimes nakikiusap kami, like, pasabay naman kami, bibili ba kayo sa ganyan? yon mga ganon. Sometimes, common naman na inuutos ng residents would be patient-related. Like, monitor mo si ganito, check mo yung temperature ni ganito, text mo sa akin kapag nakuha mo na, ganyan. Minsan lang, it seems like power trip. Pero, kailangan siya ng patient usually, na mga pinagagawa sa mga clerk. Never pa akong nakarinig ng inutusan for personal stuff unless super, super, super close kayo nung, nung resident mo or, or anyone like that. Now, for his or her next question, how to handle yung mga maldita at may saltik? Grabe naman. <laughs> may saltik na hospital staff. I would suggest keep quiet, keep calm, huwag kang sasagot. If you think that the staff, kung nurse man yan, kung medtech man yan, kung resident man yan, if they cross the line na talaga, inform your senior. Pero mas maganda, inform your clerk's monitor or your resident on duty. Let them handle the issue. Kung ano man yung naging issue, kung tinarayan ka or whatever, talk to them. Baka may misunderstanding na pwedeng ma-plan siya, ganyan. Basta don't do anything physical, huwag kang sasagot kasi once na sumagot ka, talo ka na doon. Kasi sila yung ano eh, they're employed by the hospital eh. You're currently just training there. Pero I know may sarili kayong karapatan, may mga rights tayo and stuff and alam nyo, yung mga common stuff like respect, ganyan. <laughs> Minsan kapag ka sobrang toxic, nagkakalimutan yung ganun. So if ever na someone crossed your line, talk to your senior. Don't handle it by yourself. Her next question is, how to handle insults if meron? Insults like bobo, tanga, wala ang kwenta, mga bad words. It rarely happens. Madalang kung marinig yun na from resident to clerk, mas may chance pang mangyari yun na resident to resident. I haven't heard of, sa, sa UMC, I haven't heard of uh, resident call a clerk, something like along those lines. But again, if it does happen, wag sasagot, keep quiet, keep calm. If they cross your line, again, inform your senior. Kung intern mo yung nagsabi sa'yo, sabihin mo sa clerk's monitor mo or sa resident mo, If yung resident mo mismo yung nagsabi sa'yo or if yung clerk's monitor mo na yung nagsabi sa'yo, then go to someone above him sa consultant or kahit sa chief resident nila. Basta don't handle the situation by yourself. Inform someone na above you. And also, try to evaluate the situation. If it's not a bad word naman na sinabi talaga, try to, ano, try to feel the situation. Maybe they're not trying to insult you but they're trying to teach you something. Kaso, not everyone nga lang are good teachers. Like, the intention was good, but the execution was bad. Pero ayun, if you think that they've crossed a certain line, inform your senior. Okay? For your next question, CR na may bidet, tissue, at hand soap palagi. So, bidet and hand soap, meron dun sa mga sinabi ko kanina, tissue, bring your own yan. Hindi yan as available sa hospital as dun sa College of Med. For number six, her last question, legit ba talaga na wearing red or eating spaghetti, pancit bihon, and the likes are equal to toxic or mahabang duty? Okay. It's a pamahiin. 
I'd rather not test it. Kagaya ko, ha, I only wear red kapag ka pre duty ako. Yung alam kong matatapos din na yung duty ko at uuwi ako. Kumakain ako ng spaghetti or pancit if sobrang craving ko talaga or kalmado lang yung duty or if may iba pang mag-order ng spaghetti or pancit para hindi lang ako yung masisisi kasi if you wear red or eat noodles tapos biglang nag-toxic tapos ikaw lang yung nag alam mo na kung sino sisisihin nila, di ba? Automatic, ikaw yon Now, for the fifth question, Jam says, Hi, are we allowed to take a shower at the hospital? If so, can we bring toiletries like shampoo, soap, skincare, etc.? Yes, you are allowed, pero di pwede umuwi sa dorm or kahit sa dorm build ka pa nakatira. Kasi if mawala ka sa post mo, yun yung out of post. Also, if maliligo ka, make sure na yung mga handle mong pasyente, ma-endorse mo sa ibang groupmates mo para may magmumonitor dun sa, uh, sa kanila while you're gone. And yes, you can bring toiletries. For our next question, medyo madami ulit siyang tanong. Anonymous asked... Uh, who to avoid? <laughs> I'm not gonna say any names or any departments. You guys will just have to find out kung sino-sino yun uh, once you get to the hospital. Okay? Now, uh, for the next question ni Anonymous, tips to work faster. Actually, this question would need another video because there's a lot of things that you can do. But for now, what I can say is that you should learn the pattern of the things and the workflow of clerkship. Once na na master mo yung flow ng clerkship na yan kung paano yung dating, ano yung gagawin mo ano yung mga dapat mong itanong ano yung dapat mong malaman once you have that down things will get easier it would be faster magiging mas efficient ka kasi alam mo na yung mga dadalhin mo alam mo na yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng gagawin so ayun uh, learn the workflow ng clerkship first next question what do consultants do if you can't answer their question? Uh, they will punch you in your face No, joke lang. Uh, they'll wait for your answer. And if hindi mo talaga alam, don't be afraid to say that you don't know. But you'll have to follow the I don't know with aaralin ko po or aalamin ko po. Kasi that's not enough that you don't know. You should know. Kasi that's why they're asking you. Eh. They expect that you know. So if you don't, then tell them na you don't. And then, hanapin mo na lang later. And then, baga nagkita kayo ulit, ma'am, ito pala yung pinatanong mo sa akin last time or, dok, ito pala yung sinasabi mo sa akin last time. Don, that's another way of being stellar. Kasi, maaalala ka nila eh. Remember, you guys are like 200 plus uh, clerks. So, it's very hard na maalala kayo isa-isa. So, if you want to be stellar, you have to shine. Okay? Kailangan maalala ka nila some way, somehow. And don't be anxious kung hindi mo alam yung sagot sa mga tanong nila. If you know the answer, answer the question. If you don't know the answer, then tell them that you don't know. And just follow it up with, aalamin ko po. Kasi, ang gagawin mo? Manguhula ka. Pero, take note of the questions na di mo nasasagot ngayon. Kasi, alam mo na kung ano yung kailangan mo pang malaman. Now, for his next question, are we expected to answer them correctly or know everything about the case? Well, that's a yes and no. Of course, gusto nila na masasagot mo yung mga tanong nila. Pero, di naman expected na alam mo everything about the case. Pero what they'll expect is, alam mo at least yung history and yung PE of the patient. Kasi you've been doing that for a few years na eh. Uh, yan yung focus talaga ng clerkship kasi. Uh, history and physical exam. Yung treatment, maganda alam mo rin yung basic kahit pa paano or pagka morning endorsements. Alam mo yung treatment, alam mo yung dapat ginagawa. Pero that's more on internship na eh. Clerkship, focus mo dyan is physical exam, history. Once you're an intern na, dun mo, ano, dun mo kailangang on point na rin yung ano mo, treatment mo. Kasi by that time, may MD ka na sa dulo ng pangalan mo and you're just a few months short of being a licensed physician. For their next question, paano yung distribution ng workload sa clerkship? I can't really answer this kasi iba-iba per department. Some departments, your group will have one patient for the group. Some departments, you'll have 10 patients each. Well, usually, ang task nyo naman dyan sa wards would be, of course, monitoring the patient would be number one. Number two would be wound dressing. Number three would be mga tray care. Depende sa department kung may tray care kayo. Labor watch, mga ganyan. Iba-iba eh. So, malalaman nyo na lang yan during clerkship kung paano yung paghahati-hatian nyo yung mga gagawin sa wards. Para sa next question naman niya, last question. Ay, hindi. It's not their last question. Madami pa pala to. <laughs> Um, anong area ang pinaka-chill? Ano yung pinaka-toxic? Pinaka-chill would be sa OPD, since office hours lang yon. Usually, may mga department na inaabot ng 9am yung OPD nila. Again, I'm not gonna drop any names, pero may mga departments na gano'n. Pinaka-toxic would be sa ER, 
sa ER, that's where you'll be seeing us mga ER med. Kasi syempre, ER, usually ah, sobrang daming pasyente doon. And nandun talaga yung mga toxic patients. Nandun yung mga dying, yung mga critical. Kasi that's that's the ER life eh. So, prepare yourself kapag ka may rotation ka sa ER. Kasi most likely matotoxic ka. Lalo na if you're IM, surgery, minsan tibia. Yan. Depende sa kamalasan mo. Minsan OB. Minsan kasi kapag ka dumating yung mga buntis na yan, lima, anim, sunod-sunod eh. May mga, may mga ganun time. Parang, parang nag-uusap-usap sila kung anong oras sila pupunta sa ER. Now for his next question, are nurses approachable? Well, yes. Pero syempre, iba-iba din naman yung ugali ng mga tao. So, you'll have your favorite nurses. You'll have your not-so-favorite nurses. No? So, once you learn how to respect them, nalaman mo yung kung paano, how they do their job, and hindi ka nag interfere doon, minsan may mga magiging kaibigan ka pa dyan eh. Usually naman, mabait yung nurses sa UMC. Pero, I'm not gonna generalize. I have to admit, may mga favorite nurses ako. Meron akong not-so-favorite nurses. Uh, lalo na nung nasa wards ako. No? For his last question, how to be an efficient clerk, uh, I think this would have the same answer as yung question niya na tips to work faster. Okay? Uh, next question coming from Just. Uh, Just says, Hello Doc, ask ko lang po yung current programs regarding STRO or Students' Rights and Welfare to include mental health care for clerks sa hospital. Paano po yung support system sa hospital and paano po na-uphold yung rights ng bawat isa and napapangalagaan yung welfare ng clerks? And if ever, what are the limitations of the current system when it comes to straw concerns? To be honest, I have no idea what straw means. We didn't have that when we were clerks and interns so i'm sorry pero i don't have any answers to this hindi ko alam kung ano yung straw okay moving on to question number eight coming from sars-cov-2 do you think an alternative learning system such as an online class module for the first sem really worth it what do you think okay what do i think so this is my opinion I think that given the current situation with the pandemic and everything that's going on, I think it's better than nothing. I think the best thing pa rin would be to expose the clerks sa hospital kasi yun naman talaga yung clerkship eh. First to third year sa classroom, fourth year clerkship sa hospital. But if i-expose natin yung clerks sa hospital, there are certain questions to be asked. Like, sino magbabayad for their PPEs? Kasi the patient won't. Kasi... Unang-una, isang, isang full PPE, sobrang mahal nun. And the patient pays to be treated by licensed doctors, licensed nurses, licensed medical technicians. So, they won't really want to pay for students, di ba? For their PPEs, lalo na sobrang mahal nun. If a shoulder naman yun ng clerks, again, sobrang mahal nun. Kung ilan yung ma-admit sa'yo during your duty, Ilang beses, mong pap- ilang beses kang papasok dun sa room ng patient? Ilang beses kang magpapalit ng PPE? Baka per duty mo, maka 10,000 ka per, ano, per duty yon ha? So, sobrang mahal. Another question to be asked is, what would happen or who will shoulder the expenses if may ma-infect na clerk? Yung clerk ba? Yung hospital ba? Kasi nag-duty sila sa hospital? Or yung school ba? Kasi students sila? And medyo malaking gagastos in dyan. So, those are the things that we have to consider. I think online classes gives the clerks some kind of learning, though not the ideal. Pero at least, meron. Uh, and it also gives time for a vaccine or a cure to be developed. I think it's the best way to salvage the situation. If you got any value out of this video, may natutunan ka, may napulot ka, kahit ano, please consider subscribing. It gives me a sign na tama itong ginagawa ko and that this channel is on the right track in helping pre-med and med students in their journeys to become doctors. Uh, for the last question, question number nine, Katnip asked, paano po ginagawa yung pag-endorse? Hindi ko po gets kung paano yun. Hehe. <laughs> Uh, there are two types of endorsements, the formal and the informal type of endorsement. Yung informal, yun yung ginagawa mo kapag ka mag endorse ka dun sa incoming na magjujuti. Na clerk din. So, clerk to clerk na endorsement yan. I-endorse mo sa kanya kung ano yung need niya malaman, ano yung mga pasyente mo, kung ilan yung pasyente yung kailangan niyang i-monitor. For example, like, uh, alimbawa ako, post-juti na ako, pa na ako, 
buong duty ko, may limang pasyente akong monitor So, I'll endorse them dun sa mga may iwan na duty for the day. Yung mga papalit sa akin. So, sabihin ko, i-endorse ko like, eto, patient X, eto ay known diabetic, known hypertensive. Na-admit to sa duty ko kagabi, ang uh, history nito, one day prior to consult, nag-chest pain lang siya. Uh, pumunta ng ER, pina-ECG, ang lumabas sa ECG, ST elevation. Now, to confirm, nag-drop ay sila, 500 yung lumabas. So, diagnosis natin dito, STEMI. Na monitoring nito is Q1, ang monitoring sheet nito, nakadikit dun sa may wall, sa gilid ng, sa gilid ng ref, ng room niya. And, sabi ni sir ganito, kapag yung BP umabot ng ganito, i-text siya. Text mo siya lagi. Tapos, next patient, ganyan-ganyan. So, ganun, tuloy-tuloy lang yun. For the five patients na hinandle mo buong duty, endorse mo siya. Tapos, yung incoming, siya na yung magmamonitor nun. Ikaw, rest ka na. Or, gawin mo yung mga backlog mo na papers, ganyan. Kompletuhin mo yun. So, dun na sa incoming mapupunta. Yung task to monitor the patient. Now, for the formal type of endorsements, this is what you do in the morning with the residents and sometimes may kasamang consultants to. Here, ang nag endorse is yung post-duty and ini endorse nila yung mga admissions during their tour of duty. Pag napili yung case nila na endorse, ipipresent mo yung case na yon on the spot. Starting in from the general data up to the case discussion. Uh, dito, pwedeng magtanong yung mga residents mo about the case and you'll have to read during your tour of duty. So kahit dumating pa yan alas 4 ng madaling araw, pupuntahan mo yon, interviewin mo yon, gagawin mo yon ng papel. And then Pagdating mo, pagdating ng alas 8 ng umaga, pagka-endorsement, tas napili yung case na yon, i-endorse mo yun lahat. Tas magtatanong yon kahit sa case discussion o bakit ganito yung treatment, bakit sinasabi mo sa discussion, ito, ito yung dapat na treatment by the book o bakit ganito, ganyan. So, within 4 hours, kailangan magawa mo siya ng papel, makabasa ka ng case discussion, ma-discuss mo siya. Any admissions during the whole duty, pwedeng mapili during the morning endorsement. So, you have to be ready. This has been a long video guys, but check out my other clerkship related videos right here where you can find other helpful tips. Thank you for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace!